What's going on? Welcome to View the Right Thing, and Winning Time is a dope show, but it ain't a documentary. And because of that, a lot of people are wondering how much of the versions of the players they see is real life, and how much is just made for TV. I did the first one on Jerry West, and if you haven't seen it, hit that box right there, and we'll be right here when you get back. So, today we're going to talk about Larry Bird, aka the Hick from French Lick, aka Larry Legend, and it don't get more iconic than him. And yo, I mean that literally, because the Twitter icon is actually named after the guy. So, Winning Time portrays Larry Bird as a driven, tough as nails country boy who cursed and scrapped his way all the way to the top. He's a trash talker that exudes the kind of energy reserved for anime final bosses. He's the chewing tobacco and beer to Magic Johnson's steak and champagne, and he's just as liable to throw the ball at you as he is to throw it into the hoop. Basically, they're saying that Larry Bird was a bad, bad man, but just how bad is bad? And he's supposed to be good, but how good is good? So today we're going to break down his highlights, fist fights, and assorted Larry legends to answer both of those questions. And after that, I'm going to give you my take on his game. Okay, so what about Larry the bad man? On the show, he's a jerk to magic and snotty to the press. The league rolls out the red carpet and he couldn't care less. And to be honest, most of that is generally true. See, Bird was raised in an Indiana town so small, there's not even 2,000 people living in it to this day. Kids where he's from either worked in the mines or the farms, but Larry had a way out, and that was basketball. See, Bird was religious in his devotion to the game. It was the media he couldn't care less about. Because of his upbringing, Bird just didn't value the media's opinion, and he wasn't afraid to show it. Basically, Larry Bird carried it like an OG Marshawn Lynch or maybe a Jimmy Butler. He was a weird dude. I mean, his two favorite food groups were Wedding Cake and Budweiser. But he's the no-frill answer to the decadent glitz and glamour of the NBA of the 80s. But if you think that no frills means nice, you're dead wrong because Bird in winning time is nowhere near as nasty as Bird was in real life. Okay, how can I say this nicely? Larry Bird talked a lot of shit. He talked so much trash, he'd make you want to kill him. And a lot of players actually tried. Larry Bird is on the Mount Rushmore of trash talkers in NBA history, if not the greatest shit talker of all time. Not only would Larry Bird hit you with that trash talk nonstop, but he'd be hitting you with the worst kind, the kind that takes away your soul because he's spitting straight facts, and we all know it's the truth that hurts the most. Like one time, when Larry Bird made four straight baskets in Dennis Rodman's face, he proceeds to run over to his coach Chuck Daly and say, yo, who's guarding me, Chuck? You better get somebody on me or I'm gonna go for 60. Or how about that time that Horace Grant was guarding him and Larry tells Grant exactly what he's going to do to him next. He says he's going to fake left and then he's going to shoot a right hand hook over him. And then he gets the bucket exactly like he said he would. That's savage enough to do to one dude, but what about a whole squad? Yeah, Larry Legend did that too. This one time during a timeout versus Dallas, Bird told the entire Mavericks bench the Celtics next play. He's like, look, Ainge is going to get it to DJ, DJ's going to get it to me, I'm going to shoot the shot. You got that? I'm going to stand right here. I'm not going to move. They're going to pass me the ball, and the next sound that you hear is going to be the ball hitting the bottom of the net. And yo, that's exactly what happened. And if that sounds too crazy to be true, you just described Bird's whole career. Oh, and don't have the audacity to put a white dude on him. Bird took that kind of thing personal. He'd get irritated and start scoring all over the guy, all while saying, hey, do you and your coach have a problem? Why is he doing this to you? Does he hate you? See, that's the level of trash talker that we're dealing with here. And if you talk a lot of trash, you'd better be able to back it up, which brings us to the next question. Was Larry Bird a scrapper? And this is 100% legit. I'm going to put it this way. Larry Bird had hands, y'all. And when you check the tape, those hands were equal opportunity. In winning time, there's actually a scene where Bird throws the ball at a dude. That, well, Bird really did that, except it was against the Pistons. And it was at Bill Lambeer after Bill Lambeer decided to body slam Larry Bird all over the floor. Bird's response? Hands. Dennis Rodman jumps in? More hands. One time? Bird is torching Dr. J so bad and he's tormenting him at the same time. Bird talks so much trash that Dr. J takes a cheap shot. And when he does, Larry Bird's answer, you guessed it, hands. Bird belonged to a generation of ballers that fought for everything on the court. And Larry was no exception. Bird talks so much trash that he made you want to fight him. But them Indiana hands meant that you might not win when you got there. Which brings us to the next question. Just how good was Larry Bird? Well, Magic Johnson said he was the one player that he feared. 
And Pat Riley said that if he had to choose a player to take a shot to save the game, he'd choose Michael Jordan. But if he had to choose a player to take a shot to save his life, he'd take Larry Bird. I mean, I could rattle off his accolades, but that'd just take too long. So I'm just gonna put this up here and cherry pick two of my favorites. Number one, he three-peated the league MVP. Think about that. And number two, Larry Bird is the only dude to win Rookie of the Year, League MVP, Finals MVP, All-Star MVP, Coach of the Year, and Executive of the Year. But even all of that doesn't explain just how good Larry Bird was because Larry Bird was so good, he defies explanation. That's why they call him legend. I mean, how do you explain things like that one time against Portland where Bird decides to play the whole game with only his left hand? Not because he's injured, just because he wanted a challenge. And my guy ends up with 47 points and hits the overtime game winner. Or how do you make sense of the fact that he three-peated the three-point contest from 86 to 88? And in 86, he told everybody else they was competing for second and didn't even bother to take off his warm-ups when he was whooping them. Oh, and in the last round in the 88 contest, he stuck the number one sign up and walked off the court while the go-ahead ball was in the air. And he won it. He was just that damn good. The best thing about this project for me has been the fact that even though I've always respected his game, I've come away with a whole new appreciation for it. There's a reason that Larry Bird is one of the few players to compare favorably to Michael Jordan in terms of stats and analytics. And if you watch the tape, you'll see that Bird's bag and his skill set package was ahead of its time. I'm seeing the Hezzy J and Step Back J that cats swear they discovered in 2000. His highlights are ridiculous, and that's why I've just been letting them rock throughout the entirety of this video. Overall, I think the show has gotten more right about Bird than they've gotten wrong. He was unapologetic as he was unassuming, and on the court, he was a talented trash-talking tyrant. He played basketball like that Johnny Kidd played fiddle and the devil went down to Georgia, and he was quick to tell you that he was the best there's ever been. So yeah, maybe that makes Larry Bird a trash-talker. But is it really talking trash if you're telling the truth? If you like the content, hit that like and subscribe, then ring the bell and leave a comment. It really helps the channel grow. Thanks for watching View the Right Thing. Peace.